Greenwood Training presents power, real, apparent and reactive. So from a commercial solar perspective, it's really important to ascertain quickly what is actually happening on that commercial site. We'll be talking today from a commercial solar perspective about what is power. And the first thing is what is power factor? What is real power? What is reactive power? And what is apparent power? Now all of what I've mentioned has a relationship and it basically comes down to my old favorite Pythagoras, C squared equals A squared plus B squared. In this case, apparent power equals real power plus reactive power. So what's power factor? Effectively, it's a relationship between the voltage and current in an AC system. So we've come over to the board to go through what power factor is, real, apparent, and reactive. In this situation here, we have a power factor of one. This is not real, this never really happens, but we all assume that the side has purely resistive loads, so we have a power factor of one. That means voltage and current are always in phase. So at every step of the way, they're totally in phase. They start at the same point, they finish at the same point. Now, V times I, voltage times current, equals power. So if I take this point here, voltage, here, current, and multiply them, positive voltage, positive current, positive power. Every step of the way that'll occur, apart from that microscopic point of zero, zero, and then when I go into negative. So what's negative, two negative numbers multiplied together, gives you a positive number. So, when you have a power factor of one, Positive power is continuous. There is no negative power. In the case of a site with a lot of inductive loads, for instance, an engineering company, lots of three-phase motors, starting up, doing what they do, we have a lagging power factor. So that means current there, is lagging the voltage. Now, if we apply what we, this, the principle of V times R equals power, we can see at this point, voltage times the current, positive. Voltage times the current, positive. Current times the voltage, positive. Current times the voltage, positive. But look when we get to this point here. Voltage is negative. Current is positive. That means we have negative power, and that's the reactive power. The amount of reactive power is determined how out of phase the current is from the voltage. Now, in a site that has a capacitive scenario, so it has a leading power factor, the current imagine it leads the voltage but the same principle applies now we'll be talking about non-unity power factor in reality there's a consumption of both real and reactive power by site loads and the real power is what counts it does all the work but the consumer actually pays for the apparent power which is real power divided by the power factor now reactive power is something that's required to maintain the voltage and helps the flow of real power in the AC circuit and has a relationship with real power and power factor. More reactive power, the lower the power factor. If there's zero reactive power, then the power factor is unity, but again, in reality, this never exists because all, lo um, all sites are made up of loads that are resistive, inductive and capacitive. Reactive power is not, a wa is not wasted power. It, there is, it is important and it's required to maintain the voltage to actually deliver power through the transmission lines. Also, motor loads require reactive power to convert the flow of electrons into useful work. And if there's not enough reactive power, 
the voltage sags down and it is not possible to push the power demanded by loads through the transmission lines. There always has to be a certain percentage of reactive power. Now on the site, we would say we have inductive and capacitive loads. So motors, etc., are inductive loads. And on these sites, the current lags the voltage. There is a lagging power factor. If capacitive loads, the current leads the voltage. Hence, a leading power factor. The grid is affected by all this. If there's a leading power factor, this leads to a rise in voltage. If there's a lagging power factor, leads to a fall in voltage. Extreme rises and falls in voltage leads to the grid protecting itself. If reactive power increases, the apparent power increases as well, but there's no actual change in real power. There's no more work done by the generators, but, it, but still generators provide more apparent power. So what do you do about this? One way is to correct the power factor on site. You can use a large amount of capacitors if it's a lagging power factor, inductive loads. This can correct the power factor. And basically you want to reduce the amount of reactive power that comes from the grid. But you still need reactive power. Conclusion. No site will have perfect power factor of one. It doesn't exist in reality. All power is made up of real, apparent and reactive. Now another word for real power is active power. You may need to set up power factor control on your inverter depending on your site specific attributes. Thanks very much for watching our video on real, active and apparent power. If you have any questions, inquiries, answers, feel free to drop us a line. And if you feel like it, hit that subscription button. Thanks very much.